Hello, welcome. It's the sound of the underground. Girls Aloud. The beat of the drum goes round and round. What's your favourite Girls Aloud song? Sound of the Underground, you? Biology. Nice. All welcome to the NTT20 betting show, sponsored by AK Bets. Uh, this is Ali Maxwell, George Ellick making betting picks ahead of an EFL weekend, a full slate, the returning championship, and three quarters of League One back as well. And because we're making betting picks, uh, it's important that you are gamblerware. So please make sure that you understand the risks that come with gambling. Head to begamblerware.org to brush up on those risks. This show also very strictly for over 18s only. And you will notice a pep in my step vocally on account of a good week last week on this very show. Thank goodness. Although I think uh, I was meant to speak to the lads at AK to find out whether or not Carl Wooten not starting meant that, that sorry, Ryan Bowman not starting meant that that was um, a void or not. I think you know the answer to that, don't you? What? Well, if you back someone any time and they come on as a sub, that's not, not a always. Bet, is it? Really? Is it no, book, no. Bookie's choice? But he came on at nil nil. Dealer's choice. Which is an issue. Yeah, yeah. it changes rule to rule. So we'll find out on that. Um, so TBC, what, Minus what, I, one. what I got? <laughs> Why? It's a loser. Oh, I'm, I'm kidding. We'll, we'll see. Okay, that's a bit harsh. Um, Competitive. But good to get. I was happy with my nap in. You did very well indeed. Thank you. Yeah, my nap as well. I mean, yours was the more impressive uh, nap. We kicked off winter nil winter with Wrexham winter nil uh, at six to four, skipping out demure autumn altogether here. Uh, Doncaster Gilles was my nap, um, albeit a much shorter price at five to six. Um, but the goal scorer, this dog had its day. Mm. Dylan Markin Day. Scored at 13 to 5 for Stockport for me. No, for Chesterfield. Um, and Charlton won, Rotherham won. That was an, an issue for us. Me having had under 1.5 goals, you having had no goal scorer. Two screamers. Both goals from outside the box uh, was tough to take. And Sam Stubbs was my goal scorer pick, or my long shot rather. Um, the other Cheltenham centre back scored a header from a set piece, which is, you know, uh, gives me cause for optimism, but it's also quite tough to take. Um, and as for you, Bowman, as discussed, didn't score. Newport, draw no bet, your uh, next best was not so good. But had a lovely week as a duo with yeah. a 14 to 1 winner, the under 2.5 goals quad. Three of the four games were 1 0. Cozy. Uh, the other one was Barrow 1, Swindon 1, in which Swindon, no, Barrow had to play with an outfielder in goal for an hour. So uh, in this, in a sense, we owe a lot to Swindon's idiocy Yeah, that uh, we got that up. But quite pleasing to make a tweak from BTTS 6-fold to unders and, and get it right. We're going to do it again? Yeah, for sure. I've also, I've also just looked at the AK bets rules and it is a, indeed a loser. Bit of housekeeping uh, this season. Anytime goal scorer bets, if they play any part of the game, they are deemed a runner. Yeah, make sure they start. Uh, so, amazing what a decent week can do because you spoke to me yesterday and said you're basically absolutely fizzing about this docket, this full slate. Too many picks, if anything. So, I'd like to know what you've ended up with and in particular, what is your best bet of the weekend? What's your nap? Yeah, I've had, I think, in my own personal uh, gambling on the EFL, I've had more bets this weekend than I have in all the other weekends combined. So mm. it was more a case of kind of going through them, working out which I thought that was the best value. And I came down on Reading to be Orient at home at even money with AK bets as being my my best bet. Um, Orient have, have lost all four games this season, and that you know obviously it plays a part, but like that specifically isn't. This isn't a case where I'm like, oh, they're rubbish, they're going to lose. I don't think they've been quite as bad. As the bare results have suggested, um, they've been unlucky to have come up against two very good sides at home in Birmingham and in Bolton and were just touched off in both uh, and certainly in the Bolton game would argue they, they deserved at least something out of the game. This is more to do with, from Orient's perspective, their away performances this season where they have been beaten by uh, Charlton 1-0 in a game where they were from an attacking standpoint, just very, very poor. I know Charlton are a decent side, but they only mustered uh, 0.43 XG, two shots on target. Um, they couldn't really get near a Charlton side who left it late to win, but were, were deserving of the three points when they did so. And then, most alarmingly, and I would argue one of the kind of poorest bits of form you're going to get in the EFL right now, is going to Shrewsbury, who I consider to be quite comfortably the worst team in League One, and being beaten 3-0. And in being beaten 3-0, despite the fact that 
one or two of the goals were, were pretty spectacular. Certainly the Bloxham, Bloxham's first goal. They were really poor. Like they dominated the ball. They had, they, I think they completed over 550 passes in the game. Only managed six shots, just one on target, an XG of 0.4. So you've got two games there where Orient have gone away from home and really struggled to even get themselves into the game against a Charlton side who are decent, but a Shrewsbury side who I fully anticipate will be in a, in a relegation battle this season. That follows off the back of some really poor away performances at the back end of last season, where if you look at Orient's last five league games away from home, they've lost four of them and not scored in any of those four. The only outlier was a 3-1 win against Shrewsbury on the last day of the season. Again, a Shrewsbury team that I think are very bad. And I'm not willing to give them too much credit for that. So Richie Wellens is struggling to get aside to match some promising home performances with, with good showings uh, at home. And they play a Reading team who I have spoken about a lot, but I am so impressed with. You love them. I, ju- I just think that they are being criminally underrated. And I can understand why when you look at their, their team. I know they've got a lot of good players in there, but there's still some perceived unknowns. But I just think they're operating like a team who are promotion challengers this season. And that was, I think, laid bare to everyone. You know, they went to Wrexham, they lost 3-0. I backed them in that game. Um and they, you know, I was thinking then, have I got them a bit wrong? But they, they went up against a Charlton side who hadn't conceded a goal before that game and they won it 2-0 and they were good value for that 2-0 win and they were really solid defensively. And here, in my mind, they've got a team who are, you know, well behind where Charlton are coming to town. You know, I, I just don't see any reason why they won't be the dominant force. I don't see any reason why Orient's... Um, blunted attacking output will change up against a, a Reading side who haven't conceded a, whole, a goal at home yet this season and why Reading won't be able to do what they did against Charlton and do what they did against Wigan and fashion goal scoring opportunities themselves to, to win the game um, it's even money now with AK bets I'd be surprised and disappointed if this, this doesn't go off significantly odds on because I think Reading are well ahead and uh, yeah to my mind the best bet of the weekend yeah same division for me league one for my nap uh, from Royals to Rovers, Bristol Rovers playing against Wigan Athletic. I'm picking the home side. Bristol Rovers, 21 to 20, uh, joint best price, AK bets. This is basically the introduction of a an anti-Wigan stance, I'm afraid, Ooh, that's been no. brewing throughout the international break. Uh, again, this is Wigan Athletic, the football team, not Wigan, the town or its people. Um, again? Again. When did you have to say that the first time? I had to say that last week about Gillingham. Oh, right. It's It's... It's introduction of stances season. And Fine. One needs to caveat those. Is this because of what happened with you and the Dutch over the summer? Mm, it's linked. <laughs> it's linked. I'm I'm a lover, not a hater, <laughs> and certainly not a fighter. Okay. Um, best performance of the season last time out for Wigan in defeat to Birmingham. Late defeat as well, and they acquitted themselves well in that game against Megabucks Birmingham. But that isn't enough for me to think they're suddenly going to kick into gear. It's been a really poor start to the season. I'll explain why. Wigan have this slightly odd thing where they seem to be they seem to be better against the better size than they are against the poorer teams in the division. And they seem to play better often when they have less of the ball because the opposition team are the stronger, more dominant side, which I think is an is an awkwardness for them because Sean Maloney is a possession-based manager, or at least that's what he wants to be. I think he I think he wants his team to be a possession-based ball-playing team. That's what he wants Wigan to look like. But he's been in charge for a while now, and I've just y- still yet to see any evidence that Sean Maloney is capable of with the players that he has at his disposal, or maybe he would do better with a, a different squad, actually be able to build a good possession-based attacking system. Um, last season, they were bottom eight for XG in League One. They obviously finished mid-table and and their goal output was much higher than their expected goals number, largely down to the individual finishing quality of Stephen Humphreys, who scored nine non-penalty goals from about three or four expected. He now plays for Barnsley. He's not there anymore. They've got this really young attack, really leaning heavily on low knees, which worries me a little bit. Clearly, you can get talent from Premier League academies, but it's quite volatile, like the the variability and performances of, of A, young players and B, young players that are coming from elsewhere that might not fit in, that might not adapt, that you might not even take their development quite as seriously as you might other players. I think it's quite a volatile approach to have 
this attack uh, or so much of this team being on loan. Um, and it's, it's a very young team as well. But this idea that they're better against good teams than against worse teams. It's the sort of thing that might be anecdotal. This is actually backed up in the numbers where, and this can't happen very often. Wigan finished 12th, mid-table. They got more points at a better points per game against teams in the top half than they did in the bottom half. Weird, that. Bizarre. Mm. Against top half teams, 11 wins out of 22. Against bottom half teams, 9 wins out of 24. 1.63 points per game against top half teams, 1.41 against bottom half team. So I say all this to say, I think we're going to a bit weird and I don't really trust them and I don't think they're very good. Right. So I'm getting against them. I um, don't think the attack is working well, but defensively, not great either. They're two away games so far this season. They've faced 38 shots, 16 on target against Reading and Birmingham. And those two sides are probably a bit better than Bristol Rovers at the moment. But even so, I want to be with Rovers. Um, as discussed on the Monday pod, they've had a season where in three away games, they've been second best against a group of teams that I'd expect to be top six challengers. So Barnsley, Stockport and Rotherham, two defeats and a nil-nil draw. But they've won both home games, 1-0 and 2-0 against Northampton and Cambridge. Clearly the better side in both games and won against teams that I think will be bottom eight sides in Northampton and Cambridge. So I'm placing Bristol Rovers in that kind of middle bracket. But right now I've got Wigan firmly in the bottom eight category as how I see them. Uh, and so I expect Bristol Rovers to win at home. Pleased to be getting odds <coughs> against. That's why it's my best bet of the weekend. For anyone looking to sign up to AK Bets, use the promo code NTT100. That's NTT100. Uh, link in the description, uh, which will take you straight to that promotion. Uh, and if your first bet is an accumulator on football with a minimum of four selections, AK Bets will boost the profit gained on that initial bet by 25% in the form of a free bet. Up to a value of £100, further T's and C's available on the AK Bets website. What's your next best? Yeah, dipping into League Two now. Uh, I'm back in Gillingham at even money to beat Tranmere. Uh, this is a bit of a stance, I think. A bit of an anti Tranmere stance. Yes, here we go. Nothing against the people of Tranmere. Very, very important to is say. That, that. Is, that how I, is that how I do it? Yeah. Um, Tranmere this season are unbeaten, which is a surprise to me. Yeah, at least. And uh, they've won two, they've drawn two. Um, I would say, if you look at their games so far, um, they beat Walsall 1 0 at home in a game where they Walsall missed an early penalty. They then scored very soon afterwards and didn't create much else, but were able to, to just about squeak home. They beat Carlisle away from home in a game where they had four shots, three on target, scored twice. Carlisle had 15 shots, where you know, nominally the better team, I would say. And it was kind of a smash and grab away win. A great result, of course, but a, I wouldn't say a great performance against a team who've, who've struggled for the most part. And then Notts County and um, and Port Vale, they've had nil-nil draws, where again, from an attacking point of view, they've offered very little. Um, Notts County unable to, to make their dominance count. And against Port Vale, they were defensively solid, but you know, I basically think they are edging either getting points in games where they've been second best or even winning games where they've been second best. I'm not entirely sure how long that's going to continue. And I think they are coming up here against the Gillingham side where if you look at the underlying numbers with Gillingham, it would suggest that we're going to expect a bit of a drop-off um, despite the fact they've won three of their five games so far where they are massively over outperforming their, their, their expected uh, goals ratio and the rest of things. But I think with, with Gillingham, they've had a really tough start in terms of the games that they've faced so far where they um, on opening day came up against a, a Carlisle side who had been poor and they won that game 4-1 and did so pretty well albeit Carlisle had chances but they were ahead for a lot of that game and then they went to, to Morecambe and won that game 1-0 so six points from two games they'd expect them to win but since then away at Fleetwood a Fleetwood side who I still think are going to prove a lot of people to a lot of people how good they are in the coming weeks. They drew 0-0. They beat Chesterfield 1-0 in a game where they scored early and they really came under the cosh. But this is the Chesterfield side that I think you and I both agree have to be one of the best sides in the league. And then they went to Doncaster, who are title favourites, and they lost that game 1-0. So I think the, they've had three really difficult games in a row where, yes, that has produced some pretty concerning numbers. But I think home against Tranmere here is a game where they are comfortably the better side up against a team in Tranmere who I think have shown fairly consistently that in games they are struggling to assert themselves and struggling, especially from an attacking standpoint, to um, to impress and to show that they are 
on the same level as those teams despite performances themselves. So, you know, if you're looking at uh, total, sorry, XG per 90 uh, from open play in the league this season, Chamir ranked bottom. Um, and I think that Gillingham should be able to manage their threat better than they have done in other games um, and should win the game effectively. So, again, this is a game where, in my mind, we've got a Gillingham side who's still for me, will be promotion contenders up against a Tramia side who I, I'm still not entirely sure where they fit yet, but I'd be amazed if it's in, you know, if it's anywhere near um, the top seven. Um, and so for, with Gillingham having home advantage too, I expect them to make their, their quality count. Remarkable um, early season sort of style of play metrics from Tramia. Lowest possession in the league, mm. lowest pass completion in the league. Just Nigel Adkins just absolutely shelling it yeah. at the moment. Why not? Um well, why not? Because they're not scoring many goals, <laughs> yeah. I would suggest. Yeah, um, true. Maybe they will against Chillingham. Hopefully not. Can I pick uh, Peterborough as my next best, please? Yes. Thank you. Six to five at home to Lincoln. Six to five, Peterborough at home to Lincoln. There's been some quite strong re-rating, I yeah. think, if that's the Peterborough price at home to beat Lincoln. I've been banging on about re-rating them all, all summer. Right. Yeah. I think it's gone a bit too far Un- unless it's lincoln being Mate, massively spot market inefficiencies you know massively uh, raised in the in the in the ratings because I, last season in this exact fixture possible 1.6 to win the game uh now six to five uh they beat lincoln two nil for what it's worth they were 17 to 20 to beat them in the away game drew nil it's a good historic where are you getting your historical data from i'm pretty sure is it not called like historical odds.com did not exist if you time. google historical odds it's one of the great sites, I'd say. How do I not know about this? <laughs> You're not. Odds open. Portal. Yeah, Odds Portal. There you go. Have some fun with that, but maybe once we're off air. Cool. Um, Peterborough last season were, were odds on, I'd go as far as say heavily odds on to win basically every home game, particularly outside of home games against like the top three or four. So there's clearly been a massive downgrade in their rating for them mm. to be 6-5 at home to Lincoln. Um, maybe it's because they've lost their two home games so far. Those were against Wrexham and Huddersfield. The Wrexham game, no complaints. They were they were just second best. The Huddersfield game, not at their best. Conceded two goals from outside the box. Um, they've won both their away games, looking pretty damn good against lesser opposition than Wrexham and Huddersfield. And you know clearly they've lost key players from that side last season, but it's still the same manager, the same tactical approach. I'm not ready to say this is like a completely new look, new Peterborough side that's nothing like the posh side from last season. Uh, and I'm just definitely not as clear on this apparent demise that's reflected in this price, uh, unless it's a Lincoln upgrade. If it is that, uh, it's certainly not that I think Lincoln are, are a poor side at all. They had a decent away record last season with 10 wins in 23, uh, and they've won both their away games this season as well, albeit at Burton and Stevenage, who, who I would suggest are not as strong as, as Peterborough, don't have as many threats. Lincoln also have benefited from some strong finishing to start the season much more so than um consistent chance generation right they've got the highest conversion rate in the league five set piece goals already in four games uh, and the main threat from set pieces Pordy O'Connor suspended for this game after that uh, fight with Carl Piaggiani uh, not just only, about a fight not only is he a set piece threat he's also uh, a key defender for them and their captain so quite a big miss I would suggest Pordy O'Connor um so I'd I, I might be walking straight into a trap and I think you're allowed to think that and still be up for it. <coughs> I want to walk and it might not be a trap. It might just be a, a might, really generous might, price. Yeah, it might just be a nice like party. Can't quite believe Peterborough 6-5. to five. They're my next best to beat Lincoln at home. Good. Long shot. QPR to beat Sheffield Wednesday to nil at 9-2 to two at Hillsborough. Thought there might be a, an anti Wednesday stance. Yeah, I mean, after your very impressive analysis of their uh, recent performances on Fop Mob Corner two Mondays ago. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Uh, yeah, three very concerning displays from an attacking perspective from Wednesday, who you know went from putting in such an incredibly dominant performance on opening day against Argyle to seemingly forgetting how to attack against uh, Sunderland and then Leeds and then Millwall. Um, the Millwall game in particular, where they go to the Millwall. Probably fan, a fan base expectant of three points, I would say, and must uh, 0.16 expected goals from four shots or something to that um, degree. Uh, and, you know, for Danny Royal, I think international break is going to have been incredibly important for him to try and work out what has gone wrong. And he admitted that after the, QPR, after the Millwall game. You know, he said 
things obviously aren't right right now. Um, and whilst I'm sure a lot of Wednesday fans will expect him to have sorted it, until we see that, I'm, I'm pretty willing to get against them, given they are a short price uh, to win the game up against the QPR side, who we last see beating Luton away from home and doing so in, in really good style. I think that of the of the two teams who had, you know, it's funny to think that on opening day, it was Wednesday, he went and beat Argyle 4-0 and, and uh, QPR, who who lost on opening day, having gone ahead against West Brom, were beaten 3-1, the game you were at. Mm. But since then, they've gone in opposite directions with Sifuentes as QPR looking really impressive. Um, we saw last season how good they were defensively. That hasn't continued into this campaign where they've conceded... Uh, Seven goals in their four games, albeit three of those were on opening day. Those seven goals have come from an XG of 4.8, so things kind of looking a little bit better from that perspective. Um, I would be pretty confident that there will be clean sheets coming up for QPR. Um, and up against, you know, in my mind, unless Sheffield Wednesday have massively improved their attacking output over the last couple of weeks somehow on the training pitch, then I think QPR should be able to contain them with relative ease. Mm. In which case, them being nine to two to win to nil becomes a uh, a pretty attractive proposition. So, as you say, win to nil winter continues. It is cold outside. Mm. Ever since I said that last week, it's been freezing. So I wonder if it's my fault that we're seeing this winter in mid September. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. I I'm pretty yeah I'm, I'm pretty bullish that, that QPR have to be value given they are uh, the outsiders, despite the fact that. All evidence from the last three games suggests that they're much the better side right now. From a win to nil to a, a minus one handicap for my long shot, uh, it's Barnsley to beat Stevenage at Stevenage and cover the minus one at four to one with AK bets. Um, I really liked this Barnsley price as soon as I saw it. Uh, I I actually really thought that you were going to pick Barnsley. As it was well on the long list. Long list, nice. Uh, that's a good boost. Because um, when we talked about them on Monday, we, we realised that we quite like what we're seeing under Daryl Clark. Seems to be doing exactly what you'd have hoped he would he would do in terms of an impact on this team, um, making them look a little more sturdy. Still not uh, incredible defensively, and had these individual errors against Bristol Rovers that threatened to scupper them. Um, but I, I still think, in terms of the system and how they're playing, they do look a little more assured at the back. Um, but, uh, you know, big positive for me is is their away record. Um, Barnsley have been quite good away from home for, for a year or two now. They had the third best record in League One last season away from home. And crucially, it's the scoring rate. It's their approach to away games, which seems to be so much more aggressive and attacking than, than your average team. They scored 1.91 goals per game last season away from home, which was the best scoring rate by some distance in League One. And already... Um, oh, they scored two or more, which is obviously what we need them to do here, away from home in 14 of 23 last season. And um, the next best in the league was only 11. And they look dangerous again this season. Um, probably even more, more, even more so now that um, Davis Keeler Dunn is signed and starting. So, uh, having scored two or more in four of their five games so far this season, uh, all looks pretty good going forward for Barnsley. They covered the minus one at Crawley. Uh, they were two 0 up at Lincoln before conceding in the last 20 minutes. They were 2 up against Northampton as well and drew 2-2. And then Bristol Rovers last weekend it was a 2-1 win, but they were the ones that gifted their chances, uh, Bristol Rovers their chances. So a handicap only covered once so far this season, but I'm seeing good signs from the other games um, that, that, that sort of want me to be on rather than switch me off. As for Stevenage, I still don't have the strongest grip on them this season under Alex Ravel. But in some of their games, they just haven't been able to to attack with any sort of quality. Um, they didn't have a shot in the first half against Huddersfield. They lost that 1-2-1 with a late penalty, which made both the scoreline and the XG numbers look a little bit better than they probably were. They've only scored one non-penalty goals in their four games so far, Stevenage. So I just think this quite exciting Barnsley side with a lot of firepower could just overpower Stevenage. And they're the sort of team that seem like they like to keep on going once they get mm. ahead rather than sit and defend a lead. So, Barnsley minus one, four to one. Goal scorer. Will Collar, four to one any time uh, to score for Stockport County. Stop, basically looking through this, Stockport, I think, are, I mean, they're still a bit of like four to five or 1.75, three to four around uh, for them to win, which I think is uh, a price. Um, it feels to me like if there's a team who are going to rack up a, a score line this weekend, it could be Stockport because of the way that Crawley play, um, where we know that Craw Crawley are going to a bit of water delicious um we Hydration know is the key to performance 
podcast yeah. otherwise. I don't think I drank enough water on the golf course yesterday and now my lips are dry. <sighs> um, it could also be the temperature drop. I think that's... The aforementioned. When it's sunny but also crisp and cold, I think that's pure dry lips weather. Yeah, but you, I think if you drink a lot of water, that helps. With everything. Will Collar then? Um, he hasn't scored yet this season. He's had seven shots. He's playing a much more advanced role than we've seen in recent times uh, where he's... You know, it is very much Camps and Norwood playing as the sitting two, and Collar is the uh, you know he's he's almost like the second striker I would say with, behind Wooten. Where last season we saw Challenger play with very much two up top uh, in Barry, kind of it was a rotation between Barry Wooten, um, Madden, and uh, Alafe. But this time round, it's very much Collar's the one who's playing off. Witten, uh, and I think it's a matter of time until he scores. There's also the added wrinkle where I, I don't know who's going to take Stockport's penalties this season. Uh, Collar has taken three for Stockport and he scored all three. Mm. Barry's taken quite a few, but has missed, I think, two in the league, including the last penalty that they had at the back end of last season. So there's a fair chance that Collar could be on pens, although maybe Barry will kind of, given his start to the season, would be able to get hold of it. But either way, like you look at the, the goal scorer prices for the game generally and you know, Barry's fifteen to eight, Wooten's fifteen to eight. I think Collar is someone who may not have got the goals that they've got yet, but they've got seven between them. Uh, but it is very much a matter of time and I think he probably is their third biggest goal threat and he is going to score fairly soon. And what better place to do it away at a Crawley side who defensively are not particularly good. So I like this one. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Mine is Dylan Markenday. Four to one. Again. Plays for Chesterfield. What was the rule we had last year? How many times can you do it? Two. Wasn't that without them scoring? Uh, maybe. He's, he's just won me the bet last weekend. <laughs> yeah. And that was at 13 to five. We're out to four to one here. And, and that's because Chesterfield are away at Port Vale. They are, they are much uh, less likely, per the bookmaker's odds, to beat Vale away as they were to beat Grimsby at home. Um, I still think there's a chance that they will show themselves to be the more coherent team at the moment, the team with a better way of attacking in particular. Um, but it's certainly a big game in League 2 and one to keep an eye on. Um, I mean, your point is fair. It, it's, Thank you. It's not that fun backing the same player each time. No, 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 it's fine. I, it, as he's out to 4-1. to one, Yeah. And It'd be also, a dereliction of duty if he didn't do it. If I'm honest, last week's goal gives me confidence partly because... I had quite a clear idea of how he might score against Grimsby. And in the end, the goal was basically just a bit of a freebie. He just he just pressed, and there was a mix-up between the Grimsby keeper and the defender, and he just pressed it into the yeah, goal. Yeah. He, he, like, tackled it in. Yeah. So it, in my head, he's still got, you know, the cut in from the right-hand side and get good shots on, having dribbled inside his, his fullback. He's still got that to show off. Um, he did show in that game that, you know, with the right-back of Chesterfield, the one sort of that holds the... The width in attack, Mark and Day is encouraged to take up like dangerous positions inside the box, not winger positions, more like second striker positions. So uh, we go again. We we hope that this wonderful young man can make us happy once again. Uh, Dylan Mark and Day to mark on Saturday. And Mark and Day keeps a doctor away. <laughs> cool. You can find the goal scorer picks on the AK Bets website if you go to football specials, not the top 20 specials. Goal scorers will be there. And so will be the under four, under 2.5 goals quad. Who have you contributed to this? Quite a lot of pressure after last week's 14 to 1. No, I say the opposite. No, the opposite of pressure. Pressure's off, I would okay. say. Um, Shrewsbury Charlton, number one. Uh, Nathan Jones has Charlton, as we spoke about at length last season. They are not creating loads. They're not conceding many chances. Shrewsbury, albeit with three goals last uh, time out at home, uh, in my mind, one of the worst attacking teams in the league. Even against Wrexham, while well, they conceded three goals, it wasn't like it was a, uh, you know, Wrexham didn't rack up silly shot numbers or XG numbers or anything like that. Um, so this feels like a, you know, if I was to have a bet here, it'd be probably either Charlton to win or Charlton to nil. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Wimbledon MK Dons, which is, I guess, maybe more of a, a an occasion one, maybe, where obviously the. Uh, it's a game with a lot on it, where I think uh, certainly the FC Wimbledon fans wouldn't like to even play it. A lot of needle. We saw what happened last year with running Curtis's goal very late on, which will probably give it even more needle because it's one of the most famous goals 
scored by AFC Wimbledon. Um, similar to that, I think MK Dons from an attacking point of view are yet to really click. Um, you know, we saw them score once against Walsall, but couldn't really break down Salford. Similarly, I think AFC Wimbledon and Johnny Jackson, he set up a team who are so good defensively and really give very, very little up. Um, so tight margins here in a game which could be pretty bitty anyway. Mm, 12.30 kickoff, that one. You know what they say? Never do the early kickoff. Early game, early shame. Yeah. If it loses. Early game, who to blame? And I'll be... I'll be it is a bit annoying. Like, can I be honest? May I be honest with you? Yeah. Whether this is rational or not, right. I've got two picks. Yeah. They're both three o'clock. Mm-hmm. Bet could be done before they've even taken into the field. Could be. But you know what you can do then? What? Have a treble. Mm. It's not about that, though, is it? Up it's about you. me and you coming together to take on the world. Unders. Okay, I didn't know there were unsaid rules. Bolton <laughs> Huddersfield, I'm bringing this to the table. Um... Yeah, big game in League One, and um, Bolton fans not happy with their start, understandably. Huddersfield fans seemingly quite unhappy with the last couple of performances as well. Um, Huddersfield have had two unders and two overs in their four games so far. Bolton have had three unders and two overs in their games so far. Um, And they, so far, look like two of the best teams in terms of defensive numbers, like their XG against is both top six in the division, um, and they have faced the second and fourth fewest shots. But I think up top, uh, Huddersfield look a little light. Bolton just look a little off colour, really. Um, they're, they're having lots of ball and quite a lot of territory, and they're not really doing very much with it at the moment. So I'm expecting a tight game. I'm expecting Huddersfield's good defensive shape under Mike Duff to, to make it frustrating for Bolton. Uh, and then Salford Cheltenham in League Two. Uh, all four Salford games have gone under so far this season. Cheltenham have had two under and three overs, but I'm calling I'm calling foul on some of these Cheltenham overs. Like the Newport game on opening day, that was quite open and chaotic, mm. and it was three two. But I think we can now say that 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 was more down to Newport and how chaotic yeah. they are than Cheltenham. The Grimsby three two was just never a three two game. Um, I, I think the reality of Cheltenham is that they are just a low margin team who are going to play low margin games without the ball being in play for very much of them. Um, and both of these teams, if you look at XG rather than just goals, have a very low combined XG in their games. Salford have taken the second fewer shots per game in League Two and have among the lowest XG per shot number. So not generating quality attack at all, Salford City, at the moment. So them and Cheltenham unders is the fourth of four. So that means that the quad is... Shrewsbury Charlton in League One, Bolton Huddersfield in League One, Wimbledon MK in League Two, and Salford Cheltenham in League Two. And AK Bets have boosted that to 12 to 1. You don't even need to build it on the AK Bets website. If you just go to the football section, the special section, you'll see it there under NTT20 Specials. Nice. Can you please recap your selections? Absolutely. Mm. Uh, Reading even money at home to Orient is my nap. Gillingham even money at home to Tranmere is my next best. QPR to nil away at Sheffield Wednesday is my long shot. And my goal scorer is Wilk Oller uh, at 4-1 to one for Stockport County away at Crawley Town. My laptop All with AK bets. Okay. So let's hope Your I picks are mine. Bristol Rovers at 21-20, to 20, Peterborough at 6-5, to five, Barnsley minus one at 4-1, to one, and Dylan Markande at 4-1. to one. Correct. Really? Those are good picks. Um, <laughs> thanks for listening. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the show. Thank you to AK Bats for sponsoring this podcast this year. Uh, loads to talk about on Monday. So uh, it'd be nice if you joined us on the Monday pod. Thank you, George. Thank you. Go well. <laughs>